in reality, it's like I know what a lot of these videos are about. And when they put the topic in the title, it's like this, you graduated from this person. Oh, they don't know you anymore. They can't touch you or, you know, they don't know who you are anymore. It scares them because now you've elevated from their life and they're this low level and you're up here and they can't see you. And it's like all of these, these ways. And like so many people feel good when they hear these things. And just imagine if someone left your life and thought that because they left, you were beneath them. Like, <laughs> that doesn't work. For me, it was hard to accept that there were people in my life that I loved, but I also knew that those people were not able to accept all of me and realizing that maybe their purpose in my life was never fully to accept all of me. And that's okay. In this video, I want to be the person that I never had and say the things that I wish I heard when I was experiencing my spiritual awakening and the person that I was becoming was so misunderstood that it scared the people that loved me and it also left me in a season of loneliness. So, let's get started. You've awakened to yourself. You're doing the work not only to change your reality, but your entire perception of your life experience altogether. Topics of this world no longer interest you. Gossip seems beneath you because it is. You've turned an entire new leaf and you're awake to what feels like the beginning of the rest of your life because you are in a different level of awareness. You realize how important the things that you watch and what you listen to are and how greatly it affects your life and how it trickles down into the decisions that you make. Maybe you haven't fully escaped the matrix just yet, but you're conscious enough to know that you're in one. Congratulations. This is the new earth. Whether people in your day-to-day -day know it or not, you wanting to bring good into your life and into the world by the vibrations you emit and by the intentions that you set is a small part in the massive shift in our awareness as human beings. And you should feel proud for wanting to be on the front lines of change. It's really comforting when I come on a platform like YouTube and I see so many people that love talking about healing and becoming a better human and loving better and learning and growing. But the fact that this is probably the only platform where I feel like I'm able to have the freedom to express myself freely and exist in this version of myself makes it extremely special. So I do want to say thank you so much for coming, subscribing, liking, commenting, and just wanting to be a part of this journey with me. And because in my life I've had so many awakenings and deaths and rebirths, it was so hard for me to actually have community. A part of it was because when I was younger, my communication skills were not the best. I wasn't really able to articulate the things that I felt and how strongly things resonated with me. So whenever I would learn my lessons, I would just kind of disappear. It wasn't that they did anything wrong, but I think I was just so impatient. I haven't really learn the level of patience to exist in hard conversations or or allow myself to be a part of uncomfortable conversations. I want to start off by validating your experience spiritually and wanting to be a part of just the conscious community and wanting to be a better human and, and wanting to learn and grow and elevate and ascend, essentially. Sometimes on the path to healing, you realize that there are so many things that we have buried within us just to carry on throughout our lives, that when we actually take the time to give it the attention that it has always deserved, you feel the emotions and they come in like crashing waves. But because the emotions are so strong, we want to seek out a justice that probably, for the time being, is impossible. So we unpack the things, we feel the emotions, and then we ask ourselves, how can I resolve this? Not to punish anyone else, but because we need to be okay. We know that the journey ahead is long, and we can't move at the frequency of our desires with the things that are holding us back. So we ask ourselves, who do we give this to? When I actually was able to target the things that were holding me back and I was ready to have that hard conversation with the people that were involved, sometimes they weren't there physically and mentally and emotionally. And my experience has shown me that my readiness and my change is mine. And no matter how I word my pain to loved ones to try to pull them into my shoes, if they weren't ready to receive it and if it didn't fit, it didn't fit. And no one is at fault for that. 
And the ego gets bruised when this happens because we say, if this is my brother, he should want to take accountability for what he did. If that's my family and if they love me, it shouldn't be this hard to apologize. You know, if my father is the first example of a man loving me, how do I expect to know what love is if he didn't love me first? And in the disappointment, there's no resolve. And we just hold on to it and say, all right, the next time I see you, it's this, it's whatever. The next time, don't talk to me about anything else. I don't want to see you. You know, I don't want to hear about the weather or whatever you have going on. You know, I hope it rains. And you know what? Matter of fact, I hope you drown. Because when I was drowning and when I felt like I needed someone, you weren't there. Do you see how that actually helps nothing? When we do the work to grow, it's all for us. So that we actually have a resolve within ourselves so that we can actually move on and move forward. And to also be an example that we do not necessarily need closure conversations with outside parties in order to do that. It's reminding yourself that you are actually that powerful to forgive, to accept, to move on. When you allow yourself to, I am telling you, when you are taking the time to do the work that is probably healing generations in your lineage, in your lifetime, and you are randomly exiled from your family or the people closest to you, in my experience, that is when you're being pursued by the divine so severely that in your physical life, there has to be a discomfort that you have no one else to turn to but the divine. And you have to realize that in this season of your life or in this process of like graduation mentally, emotionally, when you're realizing so much about your surroundings, a lot of the lessons that you need to learn, your surroundings are not able to really teach you or everything that you needed to learn, you have. Now it's between you and your higher source. And in order for that source to reach you, you kind of need to be excluded. Sometimes the sounds of the world, sometimes the sounds of our friends, our family, the people that we really, really love can interfere with the voice that is actually taking you to the next level consciously. And in order for you to fully listen, you have to strip yourself of everything else. And when we don't know how, life kind of forces us into it and that's really the only way and it's the harder way it comes with sometimes pain and discomfort but when you know what it's for you realize it after the fact but when you when you realize all of the series of events that happen in order to be pulled closer to that source you realize wow that was really the only way that he could get my attention you know when the people that are closest to you question your validity because it's coming from a place that they do not understand nor can they actually respect and sometimes who they are to you and the label that they carry in your life is like an open door for disrespect or just things that you are not able to allow because of the integrity that you've developed in this season of growing and changing to them all of the change that you're experiencing on your own is great up until they have to change the way that they commune with you and they have to realize that there's a lot more within themselves that they need to face before they can meet you where you are and it does scare them maybe the version that you were before was a little bit more tolerant of ignorance and now that you're reaching this level of awareness you know just how damaging ignorance is so out of love you want to shine a light and maybe you want to hold up a mirror to them so they see how they're being maybe enough to change and grow but outside looking in it's like who would really want to be in conversation that's always reminded all of the work that they needed to do when they weren't even conscious that that was something that they needed to change in their life like who wants to keep having a conversation where they're forced out of their comfort zone or they're forced to do the work that they weren't even knowledgeable that they needed to do?
If all you did was gossip about someone else or talk about someone else, if that's something that they need to distract themselves from the things within their life that they are not able to face, you seeing it for what it is is one thing, but actually giving them t the time to come within themselves and actually change on their own is probably the best thing that you can do. And it sucks because it's like, then you have to realize those are the type of people that can't come with you or can't come with you just yet because they just don't know. Like, you know, if you're someone that loves people very deeply, like, and you have such a loyalty to a certain person, um, it is kind of hard to see that there's just certain things that you can't have with them. There, There's just certain things that you can't have conversations with them about because they're just not there, you know? And it's not anyone's fault and it's no one to blame. We can't force change in people's lives and we can't force where people are in their awareness. So I think it's the ego in a person that it's going to look at someone else and say, mm, well, you haven't learned this. Well, that's how I used to be. Well, you're not at a level to have a conversation with me. So I don't want to have a conversation with you anymore. And I'm like, that's not necessarily nice. It's really very mean, actually. And it's not, if we really want to bring people together, it's never going to happen in that way. They don't believe it. And sometimes people become so attached to the version you were before that it's hard for people to believe you are actually different. But that's none of our concern. You know, we can't be attached to our past like the people outside of us are. And of course, you want people to believe you have good intentions for your growth as much as you do. But most won't, and that's okay. You know, and I think especially in the black community, or I'm a person of color, so I can only speak to this. It's like they think everything is a phase or from something outside of culture. And the whole time, you're probably walking in the most clarity you've ever had in your life. It's like I had an awakening. And as soon as I went to college, I used to indulge in like herbs. I used to smoke a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I was young. I was doing my thing. Now I realize like I haven't smoked in, in like five years. I'm just so sensitive that I, I can't take it anymore. But when I was, and I was also experiencing my awakening, I was so sensitive at the time that when I had, I wanted to have conversations with the people that I cared about. And they would always say, well, you're just, you're high. Anyway, I would get so hurt because they would, I would be gaslit into being accused of being high all the time because what I was aware of and the topic of healing was so heavy and was light years ahead of whatever I was around. And instead of wasting my energy trying to convince others of who I was, I just was. I even had to leave. Like I moved away. Like I, I had to like really exclude myself because I knew I needed to be a better example for myself. It's like I felt the divine was wanting to make an example out of me and as uncomfortable as it was, all of those experiences brought me here to be able to help someone who may be experiencing the same thing. So outside of how hard it was and how just uncomfortable I felt and who I was at the time because I was really young. I just have so much gratitude for that time. And if you are going through that season in your life where you just feel absolutely crazy, I want you to know that you're not. You know, we are spiritual beings. A lot can happen through us. We can see a lot of things. And I know it's hard to talk about, but it doesn't mean it's not worthy of being talked about. Growth, as much as we call it an ascension, it's really not linear. There's no upper down when I'm in a when I become aware of something just because that person isn't aware doesn't mean that they're beneath me it just means that their life experience hasn't brought them to that point yet or hasn't brought them to that point at all and I just have to realize that when someone isn't aware of something that I am they maybe need a little bit more compassion because there was a point in my life where I didn't know either I'm not saying that you have to wait around in your life for those people to come along, but just know 
when they're ready, you receive them with open arms in the knowing that there was something that you were also unaware of. And it doesn't feel good when someone tries to belittle you or someone tries to make you feel bad for the things you just did not know. You know, I think in the topic of spirituality or just awareness in general, I see a lot of like, it's easy for it to be exclusive. Like you can use what you know and what someone doesn't to exclude them from a part of your life. And it's like, that's just so ego to me now that I'm realizing it. It's just very snooty, snotty. It's not necessarily, if these are the people that we want to be a part of this, you kind of treating them as if they're not because they're unaware is kind of doing the opposite of what we're all trying to do here, you know? In reality, it's like, I know what a lot of these videos are about. And when they put the topic in the title, it's like this, you graduated from this person. Oh, they don't know you anymore. They can't touch you or, you know, they don't know who you are anymore. It scares them because now you've elevated from their life and they're this low level and you're up here and they can't see you. And it's like all of these, these ways. And like so many people feel good when they hear these things. And just imagine if someone left your life and thought that because they left, you were beneath them. Like, <laughs> that doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. I know what it feels like, and I know it's like a very masculine thing to do, but in reality, you're no better than anyone else. You are not above anyone. When we reach levels in awareness and have the discernment enough to know that there is an opportunity for change, it does not mean that we use that to categorize people in our lives by the level of awareness that they're at. I used to know someone that would compare every situation in his life to an awakening that he had 10 years ago. Every story that he had, everything that he did, every triumph, every fall was brought back to this awakening, this experience, this spiritual experience that he had 10 years ago. And he's, he's older, of course. And it never sat right with me. I never feel good about people that say that they're healed. Because I know in the truth of healing, it never ends. There's never going to be a point in my life where I'm like, I'm done healing. And I don't think that we're meant to. You know, when you look at a flower and you look at a plant, when it stops growing, it dies. And we have to see ourselves in the same way. We're never going to stop learning. We're never going to start growing. There's never going to be something in our life where we're just like plateaued. And it's unfortunate to watch when it happens to a lot of people where they experience things in their lives. And because of that experience, they have completely stopped themselves from having other opportunities to grow. It's like when anyone brings anything else to his attention in opportunities where he may have not seen this specific thing, it's like the laws of the universe don't really apply to him because he's had these experiences before in his previous years and nothing really matters because he's done the work when literally he's not even open to the work that really needs to be done enough to change. And it's kind of like when you see a person with a booger in their nose and they think that they're so cute but they're walking around with this thing in their nose and then when you bring it to their attention instead of them actually doing the work to pick it they're getting upset at you for bringing it up to their attention and they're like well i washed my face today and i don't have anything it's like get that shit out of your fucking nose or do something about it like there's just this wall there or like when, when i know people that um all of in their friends group right all of their friends are getting married becoming fathers having great experiences but he's the only one that has a different woman every month always is in a season of like uh, up and down you know never really has anything solid and it's because he can't see it but everyone else does there's a block there's a wall there 
and it's I never want to become one of those type of people I never want to be so high on my horse that I don't know how to apologize I'm not able to say when I'm wrong I am not able to really see myself I feel like once a person thinks that they have it all figured out something crazy happens in their life and they realize they have to be humbled to a place that takes them on another journey and I feel like life has already humbled me so much I'm honestly afraid of what could potentially happen if I don't learn my lesson so I don't know it's uh, God love them you know and we still have to find compassion for those people and make sure that we're patient enough to let them like have their own journey and not interfere because it's really not up to you their experience there's there's no amount of talking or pouring your heart to get a person to feel and understand what we experience as spiritual people you know and i want us to rest in that like you don't have to fight for who you are you could just be and know that their journey is up to a higher source and as much as you feel connected to this as like i advocate for my higher source so much i'm like i will literally i literally feel like i'm in an army or something cuz i get so passionate about this journey this my spirit and what i feel like is home to me that any person well when i was younger any person that was outside of that as much i would as i would try to pull them to this space but all it did was make me the enemy and it made me weird it may be the weird girl that was trying to force spirituality down people's throats and i like i don't want to be that so i just stayed quiet there's just nothing better than a quiet confidence in your spirituality a quiet confidence in the divine that you're truly had and i i want so many more people in our community to rest in that because it's becoming mainstream now. I don't know if you notice that everyone's trying to get like super spiritual and that is great. But there's also this um, surface level, they're trying to get you to buy something. So they want you to feel and resonate up until you check out the shopping cart. You know, it's always with something else. And for someone that has doesn't have anything to sell you, I don't really have anything to sell you other than myself um you know it should never feel like that you should never feel like man if i don't buy this class i'm not gonna reach my my point you know the divine has been doing so much with so little and if there are people in your life that you feel like have been a great asset to your experience here and that have been doing so much work within themselves to better be of service for you hold on to that i'm not talking to that i'm talking about the people that want you to buy a crystal for 777 dollars and people that got like an an oil fragrance for 22 dollars and 22 cents that will give you some type of unknown power that like literally you have within yourself like you can go to whole foods sniff some stuff that you like and it can be your anointing oil but because we have this insecurity and we assume that the things outside of us are more powerful than what we actually are they take advantage of us and i'm tired of it stand up y'all <laughs> you gotta stand up yeah anyway i think that was it for today thank you guys for so much for watching um Thank you so much for subscribing, sharing your testimonies, and really just wanting to be a part of this community. I am just so thankful that you guys are actually listening to what I have to say. I'm not used to it, not gonna lie. So thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to see you guys in my next one. Bye.